talking about derating switches. All right, uh, and I said, uh, all right, and some switches have to be derated because certain items draw a lot more current on startup. And we said that motors, um, inductive circuits, an inductive circuit is a circuit that has a lot of coils. Hey, guess what has coils in it? Motors. Um, and incandescent lamps, if you can find such a thing anymore. All right, um, let's see. You should not use AC derated switches in DC, so that would just stand for reason. But let's look at how that would work. Uh, that was a lot right there. There we go. So here's a table 11-4 out of AC4313. And it shows the D rating chart. So switches used in electric motor circuits. Let's say we had electric motor circuit. Electric motor circuit. I want red here. I like red. Electric motor. So all you have to do is type of load and look down here. Lamp, inductive relays, at solenoids. Uh, resistive, heaters. Uh, motors, lamps, inductive relay. Um, anyway, but I said motor, so here's the motor. And so if I've got a 28 volt nominal system voltage, uh, motor 28 and motor 12. So there we go. So I'm going to pick one of those uh, for a motor. What's my example? Um, <coughs> example. It's, oh, derated by a factor of 3 for 20 volt and a factor of tw uh, 2. So D rate by a factor of three and two. So let's see how this would work. Example, I have a 28 volt lamp that draws five amps. All right, so what am I gonna look for here? 28 volt lamp, where's my 28 volt lamp? Oops, and 28 volt lamp right there. So I got a D rating factor of eight. eight. All right, so D rating factor. So basically, I just multiply that times eight by my D rating factor, and I come up with 40. <coughs> 40. So I should be looking for a 40 amp switch. Wow. That's all. That's kind of misleading. D rating, and then you're going up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, what should we call it? Overrating. 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 It's totally overrated. That makes sense now. Because we never say, well, that's really derated. Um, no, so it's overrating. So we can call it overrating. It's not, but just as long as you get that. So there we go. So we need a switch that is set up for a, a 40 amp circuit. Another example, what's the largest motor a 28 volt 10 amp switch can handle? What's the largest motor a 28 volt 10 amp switch can handle? For a motor. So I've got a <laughs> motor. Okay, so 28 volt motor. A three, but. It, the switch says 10 amps. The switch is 10 amps. So what's the most amperage it can handle? So it can handle 3.33 amps. What was the question? Um, I did it backwards, I, which is a stupid thing. It's kind of like, hey, I've got a switch. I wonder what I could use it for. Well, I could use it for, so I have a switch, and the switch says 10 amps, and I'm like, hey, I've got a lot of motors, I wonder which one I could put it with. It's almost like you bought an airplane kit from Ikea, and you drop the switch out, and you're like, oh, crap, this switch says 10 amps, but I've got a whole bunch of motors, I wonder which one it went to. So you got to derate it, so you divide by 3 this time, and so you end up with 3.33. So, so it's 10 amp switch divided by uh, 3 equals 3.33 amps. Um, I'll just throw this out at you real quick, just so you're familiar with it. I don't have a lot of, oops, I should have just left right where I was. Yes. This is right out of 4313, the type of material that you can use for switches. So it shows the acceptable switch material. Lower voltage, lower amp switches have much more expensive material. So lower volts, <coughs> lower amps have much more expensive bifurcated gold. Oh, 
It's, quite, it's, it's cut in half. <laughs> <laughs> so you can get the cheap stuff up here, silver, when you get into the higher voltage, you know, three volts and one amp. <coughs> All right, we need to talk about using proper wire ends. Those are wire ends or wired terminals, and these are all proper. And what I can tell about them, number one, what color is my wire? White. 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 And guess what's printed on it? Numbers. Numbers and such. All right. I don't know where this is written, but I know it to be true. Proper mil spec ends have color coding on it as does the stuff you buy from Craigan or what was the other place? Harbor Freight. But <laughs> this stuff is clear. It's a little bit opaque. You can see through it. Notice how it's not actually solid. They use heat like that one looks a little solid to me. Um, but you can get them without. But most of the time they have a, a kind of a clearness to them. And what's happening is when you put these ends on, there it is, lost it. When you put these ends on, um, you want the insulation to go inside, well, as it says, the insulation grip, but you want to strip it back and so the wires are actually crimped in the barrel. And it's crimped twice, once here on the insulation grip and once on the barrel, so that you actually have something holding on to the insulation, not just the wires as opposed to a lot of automotive work, it's just crimped on the wires. So in an aircraft, you're gonna look for a double crimp. Not only that, you're also going to see crimpers are calibrated and the ratcheting type. And I'll show you a, a video of that shortly. But uh, a couple of points about these. This is a terminal strip. So I think that's in your Q and A's or some questions that talks about a terminal strip. What? That's called stacking. Okay, stacking. A couple of things about this, you might want to write this down. There's a Q&A question about what should you be looking for. Number one, that this stud doesn't rotate. That the stud is secure behind, behind uh, this phenolic block. This is phenolic, by the way. It's like a plastic. Uh, number two, the most, the maximum number of terminals, terminal lugs they may call them, that you can put on any one post is two, two, four. There's one down here. So you can put four. Four is the maximum you can put on here. So. All right. So I don't have time to do a lot of numbers. Uh, but they're color coded. So red is 22 to 16 gauge. Blue is 16 to 14 gauge. And yellow is the larger 12 to 10 gauge. Uh, maximum max of four terminal <coughs> ends per stud or four grounds per screw which is the same thing you're still putting four so sometimes they'll stack four and screw it to a piece of metal for your ground check the terminal strip to make sure studs don't rotate and use proper crimping techniques. Oh, Q&A question. Most terminal lugs are what type? What type are most of these? Ring, ring. ring type. Okay, so they're all ring type as opposed to hook type. Uh, hook or slot. Okay, so a a hook is just like part of one. Oops. I don't even have a hook. So it's, it's open or it's cut out right here so it just slides on. So you don't want that because it can come out. Uh, this is called, anybody know what this one's called? Uh, it's the same as these two. They're called handshake connectors. Yeah, because they have little hooks and they kind of come around and hook on each other and what you do is you actually put sh so you you put shrink wrap tubing or some sort of plastic tubing on the wire you do the little handshake where they lock in then you slide your uh, insulator over top and then you actually put a nylon tie right across here and it holds them together uh -huh. Uh -huh. so they can't come apart well okay so 
Well, like my airplane, I want to use that on my landing light because my landing light's in the cowling. And so every time I take the cowling off, I got to undo them. Oh. And you don't want, like in automotive, you would just use some to plug in, just pull them apart. You don't want that in an aircraft. You want a positive connection. Those will not pull apart. You have to undo them and then yank them apart the way they, the way they work. Kevin, is heat shrink the same way? Does it have to be a specific? It's supposed to be, but nobody does. They just buy heat shrink. <coughs> Uh, let's see. Uh, most terminal are the ring type, as opposed to hook or slotted that can come loose. Can you mix them? Like a red with a blue? Well, you would. Well, the, the color has to do with wire size. So why would you have a big wire coming to a small wire? It should be the same size wire. It should be the same size wire. You talk about handshakes or the rest of them? So we can put four of them on the one. The four of them on, you can put a yellow, a blue, a red. You can stack them up on the terminal strip. That's okay. But they have different uh, hole. That's different size of hole. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Oh. Yeah. So we can put four, but even different types. Yep. Yep. Oh, yeah. uh, let's see. <coughs> All right, a couple more points. I guess we're good. Uh, let's see, we got that. And I'm sorry, uh, but I just want to mention this. You, you want to, when you're doing wiring, because I don't know what other kind of classes you're going to get about wiring. Oh, this is a Q&A question. Why did you do that? What? Uh, this is a Q&A question, I believe. And it talks about cannon plugs. These are cannon plugs. It has to be on the ground side. Which is the ground side? The pins are the ground side? Okay, so the pins are the ground side. And what they're saying is these connect power to the source. Okay, and so I'm going to wire this up and put, they're called a cannon plug, and they go together and screw together. So you can see these pins go into these holes. And as you can imagine, if I've got one side with pins and one side with holes, I've got to decide which side should have the battery voltage and which side should go out to the load. Well, you should always have the whole side has the power. That way, if it comes unplugged and it falls down on something, mm -hmm. won't, won't ground itself out, won't short. So the pins then are dead. So the pins are the dead or ground side. And then when it plugs in, it picks up the power. This is the power receptacle. Okay, so I guess these two are a pair. When you're installing wires, you don't just put them in an airplane. You have to, you have to um, secure them correctly. So this is called centipede grommet, and it kind of works its way in there. This is a regular grommet, and these are the thing that the devil created. <laughs> they suck. Yeah. And the reason why is because whatever you put in there, they, they come like this, and you have to squeeze this down to there. And when you squeeze it down to there, this hole is going to line up about right there. <laughs> and so you put a ice pick through it, line it all up, and you get your bolt, you take your ice pick out, it goes, whoop, and the holes aren't lined up anymore. So anyway, but I just want to mention you have to do proper uh, clamping. There's also some stuff in 4313 about how to use rib lacing to actually make uh, lace all your uh, wires together and make a really nice bundle. But I want to, I'm going to show this video because I thought it was kind of cool. Yeah. What's an ice pick? <laughs> Something used to pick your eyes. I don't even. I just found this video. I wanted to show you how this works because <coughs> if you're used to crimping wires in automotive style, you just kind of crimp with this thing, and you're like, "Yeah, I'm good." Watch this. Oh, I know. So, I'm sorry. What I have to do? This won't work. I have to turn my mic off. I have to pause this. Well, I'm just. There we go. 